Trial and error is the only way to improve lizard cam's design. For nearly half an hour, the lizard has kept a low profile, but now he's on the move, exploring the surrounding scrub, apparently unaware of the video spy on his back. And then, the king does something rarely seen. Still moving. Actually, he's going up the tree. See that? Monitors like this one prefer roaming on the ground, or so it was thought. To see this species climbing is a revelation. Lizard Cam is already delivering. And bolstered by their first success, Christian and Lucas try out a more daring design, yep. a head-mounted camera with a power backpack. This time, the star of the show heads off towards a dirt track among sand dunes. He's picked up an appetizing smell. Appetizing, that is, to monitor lizards. It's the stench of rotting flesh from a roadkill, and a monitor doesn't turn up his nose at that. They're seasoned scavengers, as well as accomplished predators. Cooked in the sun, the mangled rabbit is irresistible. But how best to carve the roast? Monitors have sharp teeth, but they can't chew. So if the meal is too big to be gulped down whole, it has to be torn apart. Lizard cam is like catching a glimpse into the monitor's life and mind. You have this little video screen in front of you, and what you see is not some piece of recorded footage, but it is an animal behaving, and, and you are live on the back of a lizard. And that is, is very exciting. You get this very special point of view, and you also immediately realize the, the quality of certain discoveries. The next discoveries will be at Eric's camp in Red Sands. Basking in the early morning sun is a rarely seen lizard king. With a relatively long body and short tail, he's the dachshund of the monitors. This short-tailed monitor, or brevicata, is the smallest monitor in the world. Oh, man, look at that. This is an amazing lizard, and it's a real pygmy. Look at this savage thing. Ah, oh, ah. It's just a joke to see a little tiny thing like this acting like it's a big lizard, but they don't know they're not big. <laughs> In fact, they're just as fierce as their bigger cousins. Monitor lizards range in size over orders of magnitude, like four or five orders of magnitude. That's pretty awesome. I don't think there's any other closer related group of animals on the Earth. So it's just like the difference between a brevicata and a Komodo dragon is about the same as a mouse and an elephant. In contrast to this tiny hunter, in Indonesia, real-life dragons rule entire islands. And they truly are giants. Up to 10 feet long and weighing as much as 200 pounds, the largest Komodo dragons are not only the biggest monitors, but also the biggest lizards now walking the planet. They will bring down prey as large as deer and water buffalo, and occasionally dine on a human. 
Komodo dragons can devour up to 80% of their own weight in a single meal. That's like a human gorging on a 130 pound steak. Their appetite is legendary, but their minds are even more intriguing. Monitor lizards are fascinating for all kinds of reasons. Now, not only are they bigger than other lizards, but they're also smarter than other lizards. I dare anybody to go to a major zoo and look a monitor lizard in the eye. It's looking back at you. Other lizards don't do that. London Zoo was one of the first in the world to exhibit Komodo dragons in 1927. And it was this species above all others that revealed monitors are more than just powerful hunters. These dragons captivated an awestruck public and their keepers, as Dr. Ian Stephen knows firsthand. They displayed a surprising intelligence. Ever since Komodo dragons were kept in, in captivity, people realized that there was something extra. Um, they're incredibly inquisitive. Any sort of new thing that you put into their environment, they'll come across, they'll investigate it. They always want to know, they always sort of, they've always got one eye on you. Raja demands caution. He's 10 years old, but still a youngster. And each day, Ian needs to stimulate his natural curiosity. What's this? What's that? What's that, babe? What's this? Incredibly, this fearsome beast can be as docile as a puppy. I've kept reptiles all my life, and you never really get a lot back from them. Whereas with Komodo dragons, they definitely give you something back. They definitely seek out your presence. And when you're stroking it or interacting with it, you can see he loves it, and I love it, and you know, all the keepers love it. And this is like working around a mammal. But when it comes to food, he has a dragon's appetite, albeit a semi-tamed dragon. Roger. Hey. <whistles> Atypically for a reptile, Raja is responding to training routines you'd expect to see with intelligent mammals. What's this? Good boy. What's this? Come on. Up. Up. Good boy. Come on. Up. Up. Good boy. Good boy, Roger. Roger relates the target to food. So we use the target as a tool to move him from A to B. But the key thing is, when the target's out of his field of vision, his feeding response is turned off. OK? So now, because Roger can't see the target, he's now quite a calm animal. When he sees the target, he then expects to be fed. So it's actually a really oh, useful tool for, in sort of day-to-day -day management. And although you can target train probably most reptiles, Monitors are a lot more switched on and they take to the Good target boy. training so much quicker. Good boy, Roger. There are even reports of dragons playing, behavior previously unheard of in reptiles. He's clearly a very intelligent animal. He knows everybody's voices, everybody's smells, um, different cues, different noises. You spend five minutes talking to Roger and you can definitely see that intelligence in his eyes. It is hard to quantify but I would definitely say it's, it's without question the most intelligent reptile that I've ever worked with. You're a spoiled boy. Observing how smart monitors are in the wild is a bigger challenge. Take the Australian sand monitor, or Gouldy. This sneaky hunter is as fast as he is elusive, always on the run. Eric knows him all too well. Sand monitors frequently steal lizards from his pit traps, leaving only their telltale footprints behind. Hey, wait a minute. That looks like it might be a track. Let's see. Let's get out and check this out. That track went right over our tire track. So but today, the sand monitor might have just run out of luck. Looks like something. Where? Right there. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, that's a googly eye track. One of my favorite pastimes is tracking lizards across Australia's red sands. It went right through here. And when I find a crisp, crisp, brand new track, 
it just makes my heart beat fast.